Hello, welcome to Dream Again Africa, where we build businesses that will bless the next generation through equipping, empowering entrepreneurs in our continent. On the program, we bring information that will hope will affect how you do business. We bring information that will hope it will leave you with the strong principles of how to do business. God's way. Today we are talking about investments. The subject of investment will delve deeper into what are actually investments. Uh, what are the right places to invest in? When do you start investing? What are the kingdom principles governing investments? To talk about investments today is Kilebukhile Muloko from Proes, the founder of Proes Investments. Morning. Good morning. Kunja, Nisis. It's so good to have you, Bante Traba, in studio today. What a privilege. No, thank you so much. We yeah. always look up to you with like, how does she do this? It seems to be <laughs> such a complex industry, so male dominated. What inspires you to continue after all these years? I think uh, just understanding my calling and the purpose in life. You know, what God has actually created me uh, to do. You know, I'm passionate about seeing social and economic development. You know, I understand the role of wealth within a nation. You know, how wealth or investments uh, play an important role in one's life. Mm. And um, how it's a blessing from God for us to be blessed through wealth and material things so we can actually uh, glorify God. So, yeah. um so my strength is really drawn from the Lord. It's a very difficult industry, male dominated, as you say. Yeah. Uh, but one has to have a clear perspective in terms of why you are there and what your purpose is. Understanding what your call is. Exactly. In that mountain. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The subject of investment, as we are growing up, it's always been something that's foreign, something that is more for the rich yeah. and uh, all of that. What are investments? Let's just start there. Yeah, I think, you know, it's very important to understand that um, from God's principle, when he creates a person to come into this world, there's a destiny that is attached to that. But there's also provision that comes with that, you know, or we call it an inheritance. Um, and within that, there's a component of wealth, or we know it as money, you know, or we might even know it as investments. What um, do you mean when you say we come with provision? Meaning that when God calls a man or a woman to, for, for, to fulfill a particular uh, purpose on earth, God puts resources around that person and skills and talents and a character for them to be able to carry this through. Yeah. So if I'm meant to change nations uh, from an from a investment perspective, it implies that in my journey, mm -hmm. I will have to deal with investment related matters, either be it money or wealth or resources to be able to um, implement what God has actually called me to implement. Yeah. So, so for every person, it doesn't matter whether you're poor or rich, young or old, the aspect of money or wealth or investment is so embedded in our daily decision making. So I think what has happened previously is that a lot of people shy away from managing wealth or what investments is about uh, mm. because the structures that we live in are such that a lot of people live in poverty. Yeah. So you live from, you know, uh, hand to mouth or from, you know, getting a job and just spending or consuming. But be that as it may, investment has to be a part of our day to day life. And, and investment is a very simple uh, concept, you know, for, from how we understand it. It's really taking money, which you have, yeah. um, and it, buying something, an asset. Either, you know, some people will buy a house or you can buy shares or stocks or, you know, you can invest in, in, a, in a call account or in a bank where you are able to generate income. Yeah. Or, or end from that asset from that asset that you have mm. bought, or and generate profit, you know, in the long term. So that's what an investment is, uh, from a for, from a financial and economic perspective. So it's really choosing not to consume money that you have today, but putting it aside so that it can actually create wealth over over time. 
And someone who's at home now watching and like thinking, I would love to do that. I would love to buy a house. I would love to buy shares in a stock. I would love to do all of these things. But uh, I've only got uh, so much dollars, so much naira, so mm. much rands. Um, isn't this for the rich? No, it's not. It's not for the rich. I think with with every investment uh, strategy or decision, one has to start with what are my goals? What is that that I want to achieve? So you have to start somewhere. So for example, I can say I want to send my child to university. Yeah. So I have to then come to the conclusion: how much is it going to take for me to send, uh, you know, my son to university? Mm. Um, and from there, look at how much money do I have now? So if you have a job, then you look at, you know, what your salary is and then do your budgeting to actually see how much from what you receive and what you spend, you can set aside to actually save. So with all these demands that one have um, from the people that work and in, in doing their budget, investment should be a critical part of that budget. Yes, yeah, savings and investment should be a critical part of that process. So before you can invest, you start with actually saving. So I'm getting 10,000 mm -hmm. rents in as my monthly income. Mm -hmm. I'm spending maybe 8,000 for living expenses and so forth, and I'm left with 2,000. So what do I do with the 2,000? I put it in a savings account. I yeah. actually save it. Yeah. Um, then from there, it's good to save, but it, it doesn't actually stop there. That's the beginning stage. From there, then one looks at how can I make that money grow from After the two thousand. Yeah, from mm. the two thousand, how do I make it grow so that it can grow to an extent that maybe to twenty thousand, maybe which is what I need for my child's first year university. Then you look at different options, investment options, where you can actually then invest that money to make it actually grow to twenty thousand. But also you have to take into account what is your investment time frame, or we call it investment horizon. Yeah. Do you want to invest in a short term, or mm. is it long term, or is it medium term? Yeah. So those are the those are the beginning stages of actually going through what to invest and for how long and. Um, when to when. That. The latest uh, Africa report on Africa's investment says that there's less than 15% of people in Africa who actually save. That is accurate. Um, I think it's, it's, it's very important. I, I don't want to get very complex, okay. yeah. <laughs> complicated, yeah. but it's very important to understand the history of, of the African continent. Mm. That's true history, Africa has been colonized and African people have been enslaved that they only become workers if they do, you know, uh, get that opportunity to be blessed to actually have a job. Yeah. Um, so meaning that the, 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 I go back to the issue of inheritance. Yeah. You know, the word actually says that God is the one that determines where nations should settle and he determined the boundaries of nations. And within um, that determination that the, the Lord has actually made, um, he gives land as part of an inheritance. So land is an asset, right? It's, yeah. it's part of your wealth. When you look at the children of Israel, when they moved into into Israel, the promised land, yeah. God and migration, the migrate. God had already gave them a promise to through Abraham to say, "I will give you this land." When they took over the land, different tribes were allotted different parts of the land. Yeah. From the land, they were able to grow, to produce, and to be able to live. There was sustenance. There was blessing that came with it. Uh, there were jobs that came with it. Yeah, there was opportunity. There was to opportunity work that the land exactly and the produce. point. Yeah. So, from an African context, you find that through being colonized, and uh, that part of the inheritance has really been tampered with, mm. that the economic interest. Um, or the benefit that comes from the land, the most of it has actually been deprived of people. So you find that we end up, the majority of Africa, and I'm not saying the rest of Africa, yeah. but the majority of African people, then we end up having to get a job just to make a living. Because we don't own the land. Because we don't have productive produce. assets that mm. we own that can actually help us to generate more wealth. Yeah. We don't have productive assets that help us to actually invest. So we have a culture where you are earning uh, an income, 
but the basic needs of living are so demanding mm -hmm. that you don't, in most instances, the majority of the African people do not have access to save. So, so you have a, 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 a continent that is more uh, uh, consuming of, of goods rather than saving. And it's not that African people do not want to save. It's not that we don't think about how we can invest. We do think about these things. But when you don't have the capacity or the ability to do that, because then whatever that you earn is not even enough to sustain your day-to-day -day living you know, requirements. We are talking about investments today, and we have in studio with us Kilimukhile Moloko, who is the founder of Prowess Investments. And we are delving into investments, what they are. And right now, she's talking about just the opportunities to be able to have access to the ability to invest, which begins with the ownership of the land. As we continue our discussion, um, Maditaba, what is your advice? Now you don't have the land and you don't have uh, the opportunity yet. Let's speak specifically to the entrepreneur yeah. person who's really wanting to, to make a difference. Where would uh, they start? Yeah, I think um, there's, there's a decision that everyone has to make in terms of, even though it might be difficult for you to have access to be able to save, Within that, you need to create space for saving. <laughs> so meaning that you have to change your spending patterns, you have to change your priorities, or even if you, you're not able to meet your monthly uh, you know, expenses, it's the matter of saying, you know, uh, maybe I'll, I'll take 5% of yeah. what I receive to, start somewhere. to start somewhere. So you can't wait for you know, us having access to the land or this or whatever, because those processes take very long. Mm. Um, but one can actually start looking at how do I actually start saving from what I have. And, and I think one of the principles that uh, believers use is yeah. tithing. You know, yes. I know it's, it's not, a, <laughs> but, but you, know, uh, you know, so some people talk, you know, take, take 10% and they actually tithe that. So I think it's, it's a discipline, whether you have money or you don't have money, um, just a discipline of saying I'm going to take such a percentage of my income yeah. and I'm going to tithe, I'm going to do this, I'm going to, but part of it has got to have some aspects of actually saving. Yes, in starting with the investments, what would you say are your best, maybe, uh, I would say three areas of entry points, uh, something yeah. that uh, having uh, been operating in the investment space in Africa all over the years, uh, maybe something that you are finding as a weakness uh, in the continent, what we don't save for, and the implications of it. What are those er entry points for yeah, people who I, haven't started? Yeah, I think when you when you're starting, so determining how much you're gonna save on a on a monthly basis, and then from there you have to look at your uh, expectations. What is that that you expect for the investment to do for you? Meaning that your personal strategy. Your personal investment. strategy, yeah. Either in your individual capacity, even as a business owner, what, what is my strategy? So if, you know, I think for younger people, you still have a long time to actually invest. So you can take a long term view. So in that case, you might take part of the money that you're saving and diversify it into what you call a money market uh, investment strategy. And money market is like cash, yeah. but it's better than putting it in a bank. You put it in, in a unit trust or, or a, a vehicle that can generate a little bit more returns compared to putting it in a bank. So basically that's it, it's very safe. You will get, if you put 100,000, you will get 100,000 back plus interest. So mm. it's it's really a safe uh, vehicle. So for older people, for example, people that are a little bit older, that they might be going more towards retirement, they can take a, a large chunk of what they're saving into more of a safe, yeah. um, you know, investment. Uh, like the money. Market. Like money market or cash. And then the other option that you have, as particularly... For money markets, for example, is there a benchmark? Is there like a... Um, uh, a criteria of w w what level can you start uh, saving? Yes, uh, we're talking hundred thousand. Uh, yeah. You, you, if you talk entry entry level. level, like I mean, you know, for most banks, if you're putting money in a bank, there's no minimum. It's whatever amount. But when you're going to money market, generally you find that there'll be maybe a five thousand rand lump sum that you have to put into a money market uh, fund, mm -hmm. 
or you can actually do a debit order of 500 rands per month you know so it's it's within it's accessible or what one can do is that on a monthly basis put money into a bank account savings yeah. account mm -hmm. where you might be getting maybe six percent interest Instead and then once it gets to five thousand then move it into a money market fund as a lump sum then at least you've got that money which is earning higher than what you would actually uh, receive from just putting it in a in, in a, a bank. Normal, in a in normal, a, in a normal That's yeah. awesome advice. Yeah. And then I think from there, it's, it's so money market or cash, it's, it's more the safer way of doing it. It's a safer way of actually starting. And then from there, you can actually look at uh, stocks or equities. You know, a lot of people talk about the equity market. We know that it goes up and down, down or yeah. whatever. <laughs> but it's the, then to say, okay, fine, I'll take a portion of what I have, then I'll put it into um, into into the equity market. Um, but one has to be mindful that that's very high risk. So meaning that if I put a, a 5,000 rands into an equity fund, okay. you know, on a daily basis, prices can go up or they can go down. So that 5,000 can either grow to 6,000 or it can even grow to 4,000 4, in a very short period of time. But when you're investing in an equity fund, you have to take a long-term strategic view. Because yes, then true. over the long term, you'll have the prices going up, up and, and down. Up. But over time, you actually, uh, in most instances, over the long term, you'll be able to generate more profit where does one get sound advice? What has happened? What happens often in Africa because of the different uh, financial advisors uh, who probably earn commission from the different kind of work that they do? They tend to be biased towards what will benefit themselves uh, at, the, at the end of the day. So now you, in order for people to access uh, a credible advice in terms of what areas uh, to invest in, your money market, your equity, where, where, does they, where do people get good advice? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the industry is becoming more regulated and I think because, you know, we want to protect the interest of the investor because then there's been a lot of fraud and you know people making the wrong decisions and so forth. Mm -hmm. But but when you look at a financial advisor, first you have to find out whether they are accredited. So there are minimum standards that they have to meet in terms of qualification and experience for them to become a financial advisor. So so if you're going to come to me at Skillable Healer, then ask me the question, are you accredited? Can you prove to me that you are accredited? And then check with an independent uh, regulator whether my name is there that I'm accredited. So do a bit of... Uh, so there's websites. Yeah, there are websites. Then you do a bit of research from, from that perspective. And then the other thing is that if you want, you want me to advise you, then ask me, can I talk to a couple of your clients, please, to find out, yeah. you know, how, you know, do a bit of research, get, get a reference. Because um, nowadays you, you cannot just blindly trust um, anybody. And then the second thing is that on, on commission and how advisors are paid, it's very important to understand how are they going to be paid when you relate to them. So there's a commission-based fees that okay. financial advisors would earn. So you find that because they are incentivized to put people in different products and they get a commission. Specific products spe required exactly, by the organization. Exactly. Not necessarily what fits with your strategy. Not necessarily what fits with your strategy. So it's very important to then mm. understand, to ask the right questions. And, and, and always I say, you know, uh, you get wisdom from a couple of counselors or people that <laughs> understand. So if I'm going to ask Kilabuhile, maybe I should find out who else I can actually verify what Kilabuhile is saying if you're not sure and you're not equipped to actually make that decision. So you find that not everybody does that when they're commission-based um, yeah. incentives in place that they would actually not put the interest of the investor. But I'm just saying in most instances you find that that is actually abused. The second thing is another pricing uh, um, structure that they use is advisory fees. So if I put a thousand rents in, my financial advisor maybe will earn 1% per annum yeah. of 5,000, but it becomes a lot of money as you add it over the years. And also in that scenario, the financial advisor might be incentivized to not let you move into other investment opportunities because it suits them because they've got a recurring income that's coming from you. 
Mm. Yeah, so it's very important. Meaning that if you now, the individual, move that uh, investment to a different kind of portfolio, they lose yeah. out. Or even different fin financial advisor where they're now not the financial advisor. So these are the kind of things that I think as um, investors, we need to be asking questions and finding information. But at the end of the day, financial advisors need to be there for the interest of the investor. Um, so do not take my word for it yeah <laughs> go find out, <laughs> find out you know find out from somebody else and there, mm -hmm. there are websites where you can actually find out who that financial advisors are mm -hmm. and if you have one or two before you sign with them just sound out the advice or the counsel that you have received in terms of your situation mm -hmm. and even if you're not sure go to the third person yeah. and if there's confirmation in terms of what you need to do and you know then act upon it but do not rush into decisions because because the other thing is that we need to be careful not to want to make money very quickly. And and sometimes they get rich, get rich quick, very quickly. Quick, what do they say? They call them uh, the get rich, get quick, rich quick scheme. Exactly. Yes. So you find that because of that, then we are seduced by the spirit that you're going to make money very quickly. And we listen to the advisors that are not the right advisors because we, we, we so incentivized by, you know, we can get richer very quickly. We are talking investment and this is a deep topic. And as we talk about uh, the different types of investment, the different areas that are highly recommended for investment or where to get advice for investment. As we cover this topic, we will be back. Stay tuned. Thank you for joining us. As we continue our discussion on investments today with our lovely guest in studio, Kilibukhile Moloko, the founder of ProWess Investments. So just before she goes, please, just in case one of our people have just come back or they've just walked into the room, really just a catch up of all the nuggets that you have given us today. No, thank you so much. We're talking about investments and how to go about it. And I think, um, you know, just the top 10 strategies or tips that one can actually deploy in yeah. terms of an investment strategy. So I think first we're talking about the importance of starting by saving, you know, putting a little bit of money away, even if it's 5000 and so forth, um, you know, or $5,000 or in your currency to be able to, to save. From that, it's, very, it's important to understand what are your investment goals mm -hmm. and to plan around that. Um, so are you investing in the short term, medium term or long term? And um, what is it that you want to achieve? And, um, you know, and, and you deploy that. The second thing is, what is the investment strategy? Do you want to put money in a safe investment or, you know, slightly riskier investment? And it's important to diversify. So diversification is important. As you know, the saying, do not put your eggs in one basket. <laughs> you know, put yeah. them in different baskets. <laughs> so yeah. it becomes important. Then the other point is try to save costs in terms of if you, you use financial advisors. Look for investment strategies where the cost is very low because it will mean that you can get more out of the investment that you have actually put in place. And then from there is that do not get emotional about investments. Take a long-term view, you know, be patient about it. Avoid uh, get uh, rich quickly schemes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we all want to be a little yeah, bit rich. Like, oh. yeah. and, um, and at the end of the day, I think, you know, review your investment strategy as time goes on. Am I meeting my goals? How can I change it? And get financial advice where you, 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 you need it to yes. make sure that at the end of the day, your investment objectives are actually met. I met at the yes. end of the day. Yeah. We are not finished. We mm -hmm. hope you will be able to join us next week. We will be continuing this discussion on investment. But for today, we have come to the end of our program. And just before we go, we ask Madi Chaba, please do us the honors and just close with a word of prayer. No, thank you so much. Let us pray. Mm. Father, we, we thank you that you are a God that blesses your children. So we thank you for the ability to have knowledge uh, for, you know, it sets us free. So I pray that you would help us with what we have learned today that we will implement it um, to see the results and the blessing. Um, Father, we pray that you will set us free 
um, from the spirit of poverty and for us to uh, really move into a period or a season or position of blessing, of creating wealth, of um, really having resources that we need to be able to meet our objectives here on earth. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today as we spoke about investments. We are also reminded in Proverbs, Proverbs 15, verse 22, it says, Without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors, they succeed. So it is our advice that we get good counsel in this matter in investment. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. Let's build Africa, let's reconstruct and let's begin to invest. Start where we are. Dream again, Africa. Dream again, Africa. Dream again, Africa. And invest.